Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wild revealed on the House floor last week that her longtime partner had taken his own life in May. Today marks the one month anniversary of the death of my beloved life partner, Carrie Acker. What most people don't know is that Carrie's death was a suicide. Carrie was 63 years old. He shouldn't have had a care in the world. He was financially secure and had a warm, loving family and dozens of friends. He loved them all. And yet, incomprehensibly, he seemingly did not grasp the toll his absence would have on those who loved him. Wilde says that she's speaking out to remove the stigma surrounding suicide and mental health. And joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wilde. Uh, Congresswoman, we're so sorry for your loss. I know what a shock death from suicide can be. And I just wonder why you decided to share your pain so publicly. I decided, Allison, to share the pain because I realized that I have a pl public platform from which I can speak about an issue that unfortunately I think is too often swept under the rug. We pay a lot of lip service to mental health and yet I don't think that we as a country really recognize um, the toll that it takes on people and how prevalent it is. I read that up until the very last moment you didn't know if you, I guess, would or could make that speech. And what turned it around for you? That's correct. Well, you know, I just, it, that's correct. Um, I was on the floor. We were in the middle of legislative business. It was late at night because we were taking late votes. And these speeches are typically given at the end of the day. And right up to the last minute, I wasn't, af I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get through it. But I just um, pushed through because I felt so strongly about doing it. And there were some of my colleagues who knew that I was going to, and they had gathered around and were there to support me. And I, I was very appreciative of that. That is really nice. Why do you think there is such a stigma around suicide? You know, I, I, I've been grappling with that myself. I honestly, it's not something I've given a lot of thought to until the last uh, month. Um, you know, I, I think that we just don't have a recognition of the fact that mental illness has, I believe, um, some sort of chemical component to it, that it is to be treated as seriously as a physical ailment. You know, you wouldn't hesitate to tell your neighbor, perhaps, that you have cancer, but you would never tell your neighbor um, about your psychological turmoil um, or what's going on. The other issue that I don't think we pay nearly enough attention to is the issue of chronic pain and how that plays into mental health issues and specifically to suicide. It's one of the leading causes of suicides, I believe. Did you know that your partner was struggling? That's a really hard question. Um, I, kn I knew that he actually is one of the people who suffered from chronic pain. I knew it took a toll on him. I never imagined, and his chronic pain was related to a surgery that he had had years earlier. I never imagined that it took this kind of toll on him. Um, he was very adept at um, concealing it. Mm. Chronic physical pain is such a cross to bear for so many people. And I do think that it's important, as you say, to talk about. I mean, people, people soldier through it, you know, or they try to, but they don't want to burden their loved ones. And their he did for ones. many, many, many years he did. For many years he did, but, um, and, you know, I'm not suggesting that that was the only issue, but, and for many people it's not, but I think when it's coupled with any other type of struggle, um, it just makes it unbearable. As I said in my floor speech, um, for, to all outward appearances, there was absolutely nothing that um, should have caused this. Um, he didn't have the financial insecurities that a lot of people have. He did have a warm, loving family. He certainly wasn't alone in life. And um, so I, I've struggled to, to try to make sense of this. And I may never make sense of it, but I, if I can help um, one person or one family avoid this kind of pain, um, I, I intend to use my public platform to do so. Here are the numbers, and they're really stunning. Um, a 33% increase in suicides from the year 1999, 47,000 deaths by suicide in 2017. It's the second leading cause of death 
for people aged 10 through 44. Why do you think we've seen this spike in suicide in recent years? I. I am no expert um, on this subject yet. I intend to become one, and I don't know. We, we often talk about things like veteran suicide. We talk about suicide among LGBT youth, but we don't talk about um, the mainstream population and, and what's going on, and we need to find out. I think it's an underreported um, cause of death. I think the numbers you just cited are probably lower than they really should be, and I think until we start to talk about it openly and honestly, that we're, we're not going to get to the root cause and, and prevention of it. Um, I will tell you, and I, I, I feel the need to say this, um, I did receive a phone call from a gentleman in the Midwest the day after I gave that floor speech. He had seen it on Twitter, and he told me that he had been suicidal for months, but that after watching it, he felt that he could not do it to his wife. And um, he promised me that he would seek treatment. I hope that he has. But as I said, um, you know, I, if I saved one life by being public about it, um, then obviously I'd rather not be in a position to be, be able to talk about this, but I, I want to do something that brings that light to it and makes people feel like they're not alone. And I think that you are doing that. I mean, just by coming on TV and talking about something so painful and so private, I believe you are saving lives. Thank you very much for your candor and for sharing your personal you. story with us. And we just want to let anyone know, if you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness or feelings of suicide, please know you are not alone. There are professionals standing by at the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. They would be happy to talk anytime, 24-7, the number, 1-800-273-8255.